Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're back here in Sim Airport. Now, if you saw my last video, the last episode of this series, you will have um, possibly heard me at the very end of that say, right, what I need to do next is research advanced security, because that's a good thing to have. Um, what I didn't notice until I came back to, to edit and upload the video, which you might have noticed as I briefly hovered over this button, is that little red line there saying failed telling me that there's a uh, requirement for this research that I don't have, and that was a Chief Technical Officer in office. Because, for a start, I hadn't actually completed his office, or her office. No, we're entirely gender neutral here. Um, yeah, so I have just put down the uh, the desk and the chair that they need to make an office. So hopefully, yeah, that's the two workmen getting up there to, to put it in place. Did I actually, however, employ the... Uh, the CTO. No, I didn't. So we'll wait for that to open. So the little asterisks, the asterisk, I mean exclamation marks. Um, they're there. Um, come on. You are an office. I know you are. Right, it's gone. Right, so let's hire this uh, this person. It's a bit of an expensive um, as we said before, management people are expensive because they work all day long and they cost hundreds of hours, hundreds of dollars per hour. Uh, right, so let's get that research underway because I want that. But, um, oh, I've got to wait for this person to turn up. Come on, let's let's hurry the game along here. Where are you? There you are. Coming into our office. And it, indeed it is a lady chief technical officer. Fabulous. Right, so let's... Right, that's $36,000. And as you may recall, I took out a big loan in the last episode of three quarters of a million, most of which was to add, hopefully, a big money-making uh, feature to the airport, and that is fueling. Right, now what we can do, we don't need to worry about the operation of the airport because this doesn't directly impact on the passenger flow and stuff. Um, so, which if you mess with security, that can be an issue. If you don't do it carefully enough, you can suddenly sort of make your whole airport insecure, which means people won't be allowed to board or disembark your aircraft. Right, <clears throat> now, fuel. Uh, that comes under utilities. It does indeed. What we're going to need to do is put a fuel depot in place uh, alongside the road here, so we get fuel delivery from the fuel delivery people. We need a fuel tank in which to store it, and we need a refuel station, uh, at which point our fuel uh, tankers, our local fueling uh, vehicles, can deliver fuel to the aircraft themselves, and we'll need a hangar. Uh, where are those? Uh, they're in objects, are they structures? We'll need a hangar to put our fueling vehicle into overnight, <coughs> and where it does maintenance or whatever. Whatever vehicles do, when they're asleep and not playing. Right, so let's get this. Now, we want to minimise the length of pipe we need to connect all our bits together. So I'm thinking if we run it along here, that should be easy enough, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Right, now, if I remember the way around these goes, uh, I think the pipe outlet we will take fuel from into our buildings is on the right hand side here where all the wiring is the pipe work is yep there it is you see a little you look, see a little pipe symbol so that's what we need to connect up so we need a tanker and let's go back up a level uh, the pipes will run underground uh, I get, oh uh, I think what we'll do is if we put the pipe We'll put the pipe inside our fence, so it's secure. Obviously, people, criminals and stuff, people won't won't be coming to uh, to target our fuel supply. And now on this, uh, where's the pump? Uh, good question. I can't remember. <laughs> Actually, what I'll do first is I will put in some road. Uh, I think this is. <clears throat> Where is road? Oh, there it is. Um, I think this is a f something that's not quite perfect yet in the game. 
is the... <clears throat> excuse me, I've still got this bit of a cold, so I'm a, I'm a bit throaty and coughy, I'm afraid. I hope I don't distract too much. Um, the, the, the vehicles that you have, the baggage carts and the fueling vehicles, will tend to run along the taxiway to get to the gates to, to, to feed the aircraft. Um, which is, <clears throat> I don't believe is entirely accurate, so they should use sort of little roads of, of their own. But again, I'm not sure the game really sort of works to that uh, as well as it could. So if we put... Um, yeah, so if we put some road down here and run that across... The roads are given direction arrows, and I'm not sure that really applies or has too much effect here within the airport. Um, here outside the airport, you do get traffic, and it does go just the one way, which is down the screen, as it were. But I'm not sure that's terribly uh, important as far as uh, in inside the airport is concerned. So if we put that out there, like that... <coughs> What I'm thinking is if we put our... Now, the trouble with the small hangar is it only fits in, as it says here, one vehicle. Which is fine, because all I want at the moment is fueling. But we will be putting baggage systems in here, and that requires vehicles as well. Uh, so rather than spending money on two or three small hangars, we'll go the full Monty and put the medium hangar in there, which gives me three vehicles. The large gives me five, but that, that's just too expensive. I don't need that. Certainly not for this size of airport. So let's slip you in there. And we'll put our little fueling point in here. If we put it there. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. And the pipe work we need connects from there to there and then oh it's the other side of that you see the little symbol there uh, so if we take that out there and run that along right that should all join up excellent right now once we've got um, all the uh, the facilities in place all the construction done and we've got our fuel vehicle in place we can then start buying and then Best of all, selling fuel. So let's run this game forward a bit. <coughs> uh, actually, do, would it be worth getting more workmen? How many have I got? Six. How are they doing? Actually, yeah, let's speed that up. Let's get a couple more workmen on the site. Oh, shit, yeah. This, this is all deliveries of the bits and pieces, the construction materials they need to complete my uh, my demand for stuff on my airport okay so the depot's finished we'll just need to connect it up to the tank and then to the rest of the uh, these bits of building how are we doing in terms of uh, flight uh, performance uh, everything is departing in good time the green arrows are still there all the flights are fully boarded, so hopefully I'll get another perfect ops uh, bonus today. As we can see, uh, profit and loss. Yeah, my, this is the construction materials. And again, this is a great thing about Sim Airport, this game, is it does give you a lot of great detail as to exactly how money is coming into, and more often, certainly at this stage of the game, <laughs> flowing out of your bank balance. So that's excellent. Uh, so I am certainly down today, although uh, yesterday I was up by a huge amount because I got this great big loan in. Uh, the airport value. Again, this is, this is going up. So the only major problem I've got is this debt. Uh, this doesn't expand um, of this three quarters of a million. But my airport valuation is still good. I need to keep that up because that impresses the bank. So if I need to go back to them for another loan, um, having a good airport valuation will give me a better interest rate. 
Ah, okay, right. Right, so the pipes are being completed there. Excellent. So I think once that exclamation mark has gone, actually I can do that now. I can assign. Just need one uh, fuel truck in there. Now you can, well, I can buy fuel now because I've got all the bits in place. I'll just slow the game down a bit. Um, it normally arrives at uh, eleven o'clock at night. Or you can pay a surcharge of 5k to have it delivered immediately. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait to till um, till overnight for the fuel to arrive. Now the thing is to buy it at a, at a good price. You see here at the top the fuel exchange. The price is going down. So if we're going to keep watching it going down and down. And then try and buy it at the best possible price. And you see here the price of it is going down all the time until it starts going up. Now, if I could get that below 110, I'd be amazed. <laughs> I think that's kind of unlikely. If we keep it going down, is it keeping on going down? It is. This is wonderful. Once it starts going back up again, perhaps I'll. Uh, I'll hit the buy now button. No, it's this, uh, it's, looks like it's hit the bottom of the market there now. Yeah. Okay, let's buy that. Okay, so that's going to arrive uh, at 11 o'clock tonight. And my pricing model. Now, I can either track the market, in which case I will sell fuel onto the airlines for 15% markup on the market price. So presumably that's at that price there. So it tells me here, fuel will be, fuel will be sold to airlines at a rate proportional to the fluctuation mar fluctuating market price. Demand for refueling services will remain relatively stable, but profit margin will fluctuate. Uh, I'm not sure, is, is that Grammatically, is that financially correct? The profit margin will fluctuate? I'm not entirely sure. What's, hang on, what's going on here? Garbage zones are full. Oh, heck. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> this is what happens when you get so many passengers coming in for your uh, very busy airline. What I need to do is build. There's a dumpster. That's it. And these will take 10 they take 10 bags I'm not sure they so my current garbage capacity is 40 I think so if I stick two of these in here one and that there you go so is it going to tell me what my it's not telling me what my capacity is but that should deal with it for the moment one Oh yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm dealing with it. I'm dealing with it. We were looking at fuel, weren't we? Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so I'm not sure the profit margin. If it's 15% above, is that? I'm buying it at 1.28. But if the price goes down and I have 15% markup on that, it's the actual real current price of fuel. So that could fluctuate. Uh, whereas if I go for a fixed price. It will be sold at a specified price regardless of the current market rate. And demand for refueling will fluctuate accordingly. But profit margin will remain... Ah, uh, yeah, I think. So what happens here is if I... I bought it at 128 and I will always sell it at 130 or whatever. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So tracking the market... Oh, it's 11 o'clock. Right, so my fuel is arriving. And my three quarters of a million loan has turned into under 300,000. Right, so how much will I sell this for? Um, if we track the market price, because I think I bought at a fairly low price, so if I make that 20%, which means four, when it says here, my estimated demand tomorrow is that four of my 14 flights will request fuel. 
and that will require approximately 17,000 to 40,000 litres. They spelt litres in the American way, of course. That's what you get when you have an American developer of a game. They spell things in a non-English kind of way. It's OK. I'm, I'm OK with that. I'm not going to get too upset, he said. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Right, run the game on at full speed. The research should be done in five hours. So by the time we open the airport, we'll have advanced security, which I like because that helps me cut down on my staff costs. At this point, being a small airport, not by much, but every little bit helps. Uh, OK, so let's look at the garbage zone. 40. Um, ah, yeah, the dumpster does take 10. That's fine. That's, that's quite good then. So I should be able to put in a fair amount of extra expansion and still still have room for all the garbage my passengers leave behind. Okay, so what's the estimate here? So the estimate is that I will make nine thousand nearly nearly ten thousand dollars worth of profit today. Let's see. Now hopefully as we will see, fuel can be very profitable if you buy it at the right price and have the right pricing structure. So, but you never know which airlines or which aircraft will require fueling. So as it suggested there, 4.61 of my 14 slides. 14 slides? Flights! And demand has gone up. Interesting. Okay. Let's see how... Oh, can I just check my perfect ops bonus? I got it yesterday for my 14 flights. Excellent. That's eight grand in the bank. That's very handy. OK, we'll slow down a little bit. I just noticed my research is completed. And that's, uh, that's cool. Uh, oh, I'm on profit and loss. Yes, so today I have made fourteen thousand. Oh, I've refueled an airplane. I didn't notice that. You might have seen it pop up. I made nine thousand dollars on that. Excellent. I'll just wait and see if there's another fuel coming in, a new air, another airline coming in. Um, en route, June 750. Should be a final approach. He's coming in soon. No. No, I'm afraid we missed the fuel truck. They do tend to arrive before the aircraft actually gets to the gate, so they're ready and waiting to fuel up as soon as possible. Okay, so why did I research the advanced security? Because I can put in remote bag scanners and a remote security station. Now, I can't remember, I might well have mentioned this in the previous episode. Uh, the beauty of the remote bag scanning is that the scanners themselves don't require uh, a member of staff. You just need a member of staff on the remote scanning station. So I could cut my staff here from three to one. Um, you can actually run many remote bag scanners from one station, but my understanding of the mechanics is, no, no fuel for that plane either, is that the more scanners you put on a station, the slower they will get. There is going to be a sort of tipping point the remote scanners are faster than these manual ones uh, until you get to about four or five scanners uh, on one remote station. OK, so what we're going to do... Um, actually, how big are those things? They are quite chunky. Yeah, as you can see there, we're going to need to move stuff around, I think. Out of the way. If I put you there, oh no, the metal. Yeah, no, that's fine. That no, that will work. Um, what I might, yeah, but that that'll work. That's fine. Okay, so I don't think we're too busy at the moment. So let's. Can I dismantle? this and I'll dismantle you as well and what we'll put in place we'll get the uh, 
the security station set up first. Ready? So we'll put you in. We'll put you up there. I think. Okay. And we'll put the remote bag scanner. Make sure it's pointing in the right direction. Like that. Uh, yeah, put you there. And we'll put the metal detector back. As there, I think. Okay, so if we replace these kind of one at a time, then we should be okay. We shouldn't disrupt our operation too much. Okay, good. Where's he going? Oh, up there. Excellent. Right, once that's done. Once that's done, go on, hurry along. There we are. We can assign that remote station to manage this remote bag scanner there. Excellent. So if we. Uh, can I squeeze you in? Uh, can I squeeze you in there? This is going to be fun, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get rid of this one first. This one appears to be the most popular. Let's wait for a. A lull in the passengers. Is there going to be a lull in the passengers? Difficult to tell. Oh, we've refuelled again. Excellent. Yeah, see what he does? He stops there. He, he keeps him, himself full. So he must take around 45, 40 something thousand litres, I think, on the, on the truck itself. Okay, so let's dismantle you. And get a new remote bag scanner in. Oh, you are tight there, aren't you? Ugh. I don't like that at all. Let's put that down anyway. See how unsightly it looks. Yeah, I think the next thing I'm going to have to do is um, expand this security area, make this bigger, so I might need to actually bring the airport down here. So let's just check on our profit. No, you're not refueling either. Uh, so in our profit we have sold uh, over eleven thousand dollars worth of fuel, but we still made a loss because we've been buying stuff. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Ah, right, and we want to assign you to that bag scanner there. Right, so I have saved one member of staff anyway, uh, so uh, we don't need ten members of staff. Okay, ah, I do need to remember my, it's not that schedule, it's the staff schedule. So, daytime, yep, they're all staffed. Nighttime, no, you're not. Okay. Uh, I think that's fine. Yeah, I'm thinking I might need to put in another um, staff schedule period here to cover, ah, actually, that's a thought, do I need to do that now? Uh, where's my last flight? My last flight, yeah. What I need, I think, is another big flight here at the end of the day. Can we find one? Uh, Air Malta like us. Is there one we're not doing business with that's got a PM flight? Another one from a Ford Air? What do you offer? Ooh, 737s. 140 passengers? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, so if we slip you in down there. So, we're going to need people 
on the gate at least of gate two uh, till after 10 o'clock so what do I want to do with my schedule this, this is where it starts getting you have to start thinking <laughs> I could extend the daytime schedule to go up to 11 but I don't need both gates up okay I will do that for now I'll do that for now but I think as part of the next um, enhancement the next upgrade to the station I will I think start adding in slightly different schedules for the staff to cope with demand this pickup area looks very busy okay you look very full obviously the bus I think the buses carry 25 passengers apiece oh fuel is very cheap right let's pause this for a second uh, how much have we got in there 37 so if I add another 40,000 to that that makes it no 50 57 that makes it 87 yep so we'll add how much uh, by if I make that if I make that 50,000 liters that's going to cost me yeah let's uh, let's buy it at that price I think then of course we'll just watch the price of fuel. ah there it comes there's a fuel truck so he's getting in the way of the aircraft <laughs> and then there's this neat little animation this green line saying that uh, something is being transferred between the plane and the truck which is fuel and it works similarly for baggage as well you, you just have this lovely little sort of green line flashing saying baggage is being loaded or unloaded from the plane well, so I'm still in line apparently for a three thousand dollar profit today what's it actually looking like ah yeah I've lost because I spent fifty thousand on fuel purchase <laughs> well whatever much I've sold 36 it can make if you get the pricing right uh, and sell it a lot and stop buying expensive new parts of building it can be a very profitable operation so yeah the coffee is selling 1200 actually I'm just wondering if that one person there they seem to be coping okay how are my passengers feeling that's good uh, so we're getting 77 79 percent satisfaction 80 percent satisfaction for thirst excellent that is good the only slightly odd thing is boredom which is down to 65 percent um, I think we seem to have enough games in here to keep them occupied I don't I don't know what else you can do to improve um, your boredom ratings Actually, what were the passenger needs showing here? The well, environment is still mildly dissatisfied. <laughs> Everything else is looking good. Over time, how much time have they spent today? Yeah, getting money, boarding, yeah. Nothing is taking too long, I think. I'm not entirely sure how to interpret all this, to be honest. But it, it's green. That's good, isn't it? not sure but I think this gives you an idea of uh, where you might need to spend money so if they're spending a lot of time in ticketing or security uh, you might need to increase staffing levels uh, on those areas and like and it likewise if the restroom which I think is the toilets or bathrooms as some people call them um, if that's too long it might mean you need more uh, toilet space to cater for all your your customers so I think every plane has left my staff will leave soon my flight status is looking perfect again ah oh, yeah this should be good and my cash flow yeah a little bit yeah negative <laughs> but we're not going to worry too much about that yeah I think so for the next episode we're going to need to uh, extend our airport building uh, improve security here get rid of this manual baggage scanner 
uh, put another remote one in there uh, yeah I, th I think we're going to need yes we're going to need to extend it uh, southwards I think is what we're going to do because we don't really have room to go that way okay so today is a new day and the computer suggests we might make four grand in profit how did we actually do yesterday we lost 65,000 um, yeah so if we hadn't bought all that fuel and had so much interest to pay on our loan we might be all right so how's our Look, the price of fuel has gone down again. <laughs> uh, what's our capacity at the moment? It's 67. Uh, so, if I buy another 20 at this low price, going down below a dollar. So if I buy that, okay, that's cool. Now we're running out of money again. And the problem is, is if I go and ask the bank for a slightly larger loan, I'm going to get charged an extortionate amount of interest. Yeah, which is not good. Now what we could do here at this point, uh, as I said, I do like to invest in credit reporting. I'm not, sure, I'm not going to do that just yet. We're going to see how the next day pans out. If we start making money, uh, I could actually make a little bit of money by selling these old redundant bag scanners. Maybe only a grand or so each, but it's a bit. Pharmacy display. How's that one doing? Well, I've already paid for it, so I might as well stick it in there. See if that improves customer sales. Uh, so that was objects, retail, and it was one of the pharmacy displays. That one. So if we stick you in there as well. Yeah. See if that attracts any new punters. Okay, so that's it for today, I think. Uh, we've got a new money-making widget. A new money-making feature of the airport, which is the fuel system. And looking at this, 6% of our, 6 of our 15 flights will now request fuel which is a good sign if we can keep that up it would be better if I sold it for less if I didn't have that 20% um, hike on the market price I could sell more but then means that yeah it's a, it's a juggling act uh, we'll see how the next day next day goes and make a decision on pricing on that actually what I could do uh, with this new feature I've added to my airport I think we can start if we charge 600 now for each aircraft to use our runway that should be okay and 25 dollars per passenger yes that that will fund improved security and stuff <laughs> so i'm sure the airlines will appreciate that expenditure anyway that's it i think for today thank you very much for joining me hope you've enjoyed this episode of sim airport and if you did you could if you'd be awfully awfully kind just a little click on that like button that would be great uh, even better though if you've any thoughts suggestions recommendations uh, even criticisms of the way i'm running this airport it'd be great to hear from you just drop a note into the comments section below in that little box uh, and of course if you've not done so already please do subscribe to the channel and that way you'll know when i upload another one of these or any of my other let's play series but from me ajax post here in sim airport i'll see you again soon but until then Bye-bye for now.